Hey Stitchers, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I thought I would do something a little bit different with you guys today. And uh, like the title says, let's sort some floss. I know how much you guys love to do that, she says, chuckling under her breath. Um, but seriously, it's a chore that a lot of Stitchers don't like to do. And there will probably be some of you out there that do enjoy it, like me. So I thought I would open up this kit. Actually, I opened it up yesterday because last night I actually... Um, I was getting ready to film this and realized that I wanted to do some prep work ahead of time just so that it would make this video a little bit shorter. So what I did is I made some uh, thread drops or thread tags and there are lots of tutorials on how to do this. Um, I have seen um, Mischievous Stitches has shown how to do them and I most recently saw Nell from Little House, Little Yellow House Crafts. And um, there's lots of different ways, lots of different styles that you could make. I have limited amount of supplies on hand right now just because of this whole quarantine thing. So um, what I did, actually, let me grab it and show you the cardstock that I used. Okay, so I used these. Uh, this is some scrapbooking paper that I had on hand. And uh, it's just these vintage kind of worn textures here that are great to use and they're small and I thought oh I'm going to grab these and um, use them for this because this is really thick paper so I thought that'll be perfect because one way that you make it is one way that you can make your regular scrapbook paper stiff is to um, get a piece of just another like two pieces of cardstock a plain solid colored one and then use a like a spray glue adhesive to you know basically stick to the back of this just to make it a little bit thicker and I thought well these are pretty thick well I didn't I didn't realize it until after I was done making these that it's thick because this is adhesive paper that has actually a backing on it that you can peel off and I didn't realize that and I cut a whole bunch of them before I remembered that these so these are the tags that I I cut so I have a lot of these to use now and um, you can cut them in tag shapes, uh, in circles. You can do all different kinds of things like the other tutorials will show. There's, like I said, I'll link below how to do those. But um, the way I did mine is, let me grab one here. So I just decided on a good size that was basically that I could use. And then I have this little corner punch that is really easy to just make these little round corners like that. So, but you can get all kinds of shapes. There's fun shapes. And then um, a lot of the tutorials show basically to, to cut like one small hole to put on your ring and then a bigger hole here if you have like a lot of floss that you want to hold on there. Um, but I only had this one punch on hand. So I don't know where any of my punches are. So I went ahead and just um, decided to use this and I'm going to put two two on each tag. You can just do one if you want, but I made myself a little template just so that I remember how to do this in the future. And anyway, so then I could kind of remember how I made these if I want to make more. So I went ahead and pre-made those last night before I filmed this video. And I went ahead and put all of the numbers of floss from this kit on here. So they're kind of just, as I sort them, I can add them to the card. Okay. Oh, and then I was going to show you what's really fun is here is another, I'm going to link another tutorial below because I just watched Michelle Rudy from Farm Girl, Farm Girl Stitches, I think it's just Farm Girl. I'll link her channel below. You have to subscribe to her. She has wonderful tutorials. Every time I watch her videos, I get so motivated to make things. So um, she shows how to make these little fun uh, kind of like thread drop fobs and she she shows uh, Michelle shows all these different um, ways that you could make like uh, you can get these book binder rings for that are kind of vintage and bronze and then she also talks about ordering these on Amazon which is exactly what I did and I ordered as you can see a whole set of these that come in different shapes and sizes these little glass uh, they're called uh, bezels and then these the glass inserts are called cabochons I think I said that correctly but anyway she shows all how to do that how to add all kinds of different charms and 
bling it up. You can actually hang them from your scissors, make scissor fobs, all kinds of things. So definitely go check out that video. But this one, we are going to be sorting floss. So many different ways to do this. This is just kind of how I do it. So you open up the kit and inside these dimensions kits you'll usually find your your um, fabric and then there's usually a needle in there too so we're going to just take that and put that all off to the side for now because I'm not going to start this kit just yet but I'm getting it ready all right the newer kits have the floss already sorted and on these little sort of these little thread organizers so it's really nice you don't have to do this but when you get these older kits you have to do it yourself so let's just do that it says it explains to you basically right here it says to make it easier to sort your colors they separated them into bundles and you can identify each bundle by finding the first color in the list so this shows you it's bundle one and then the first color in the list is black so what you do then is you just basically look now this kit is kind of small sometimes the kits have lots of floss and the colors can be real close real similar so you basically just look and see which one has the black which uh it's definitely this one so this is bundle one so that's the one we'll be working with first okay and then um basically what you do is you just look to you you use um the color obviously to identify it but when it gets when you have some colors that are similar you then identify which one it is by how many strands they give you like this one this is the black so I know that I should have four strands of the black one of the pale pink two of the pink so forth so okay so to get started let's just get the black one out first because that's easy we know we need four strands of black For this is 18403. So basically, what you do is so what that does after you pull it through, I feel like everybody already knows how to do this, but just in case you don't, a lark's head knot is you basically just get the loop like that and then you just pull the end through it like that. And you get this nice and I like to I came from the back side because I like when I turn it over to the side that's decorative that you have this part in front because that allows you then to pull a strand of floss out right after there and I'll show you how to do that in a minute in case you don't know how to do that okay so um, yeah there we've got one thread tag already ready to go okay so next I see the next three colors are all pink we got pale pink pink and dark pink so what you can do is just grab all the pink ones now there's two ways you could do this if you if you want and this one might be kind of easy to do that is to just separate all the colors that look the same so you could do it that way i'm going to do it the way i was going to do it i'm just going to pull the pink all the things that that look pink i'm going to pull those out because i want to show you what it you know kind of how to help you when you have colors that are similar so Okay, you might be looking at this thinking, oh, is this pink or is this pink? You know, is, do they consider this pink or this purple? So I'm just grabbing the ones that to me definitely look like they might be a shade of pink. And I'm just setting them to the side. Yeah, this is kind of iffy because these kind of look sort of lavender to me, but that one definitely looks like a pink right there. All right, now let me manage this and make sure this is staying untangled. Okay, all right, so we've got three pinks. And basically, the pale, there's one of the pale pink, two of pinks, and one of dark pink. So I definitely, this is easy, that's pink, that's going to be the pale pink, that's going to be the pink because there's two of them, and this is going to be the dark pink because there's only one of those. So, keeping this next to you, you just find your little thread card to make sure you have the right colors. And we need 
um, a 13129. Like I said, sometimes it can be, I think that's what, what can be tricky about sorting floss is because it can be sort of ambiguous, especially when you have something that's like, you know, light green and very light green. And there's what usually you can tell the difference because of the amount of strands that it has. But sometimes it'll be, you know, two strands of both. And you'll be like, okay, which one is it? It's just kind of like a puzzle. You know, if you like brain teasers like me, then you'll enjoy this. Plus, who doesn't like to just, you know, play with floss, right? Okay, I'm going to speed this up. Have fun watching. got the first bundle all done and ready to go. I just chose to put two on each card because this, as you can see, this kit only has like one strand sometimes for, you know, both of these, but you wouldn't want to put, you know, load this down with too much. That's why this blue that came with this many strands, I went ahead and just sort of divided it up and put it so that, you know, if, after a while of tugging on this, you won't um, compromise your little thread tag. Okay, um, yep, so I'm going to go ahead and finish with this, the other bundle, and see you in a minute. Okay, so here's kind of a tricky one. Um, this next color that they want is magenta, and there's only one of those, and I am not sure what they're calling magenta. So, what you do is you look and see, okay, what could potentially be a magenta color that they're talking about? Definitely could be any one of these. Okay, so what you do is you look to see, first of all, which one is there only one of? And, okay, it's that one right there. So, I'm thinking that that is what they're calling magenta. Right? Because there's one magenta, and then if you look down here, there's a dark purple, a pink purple, and a purple. So, okay, could that be dark purple? I mean, could that be the dark pink? Okay, so that I'm not sure about. So let's, let's do another process of elimination. Let's just do the ones that we know for sure. to me look exactly the same so whichever pink that they are showing me that there's supposed to be three of three light magentas okay so we know this is light magenta and the only reason that I even really know what magenta is is because when my kids were little they used to watch Blue's Clues all the time and anybody that watches Blue's Clues knows that um yeah the other 
little friend was magenta. So I know that magenta is pink, but I, you know, it technically could kind of be any of these, really. <laughs> Pretty good that I got these colors right, sorted correctly. All right, the last final step, the fun part, is you take all your thread tags like this, the little ring. that so you can see how pretty that is and there we go thread tags ready to go and you just flip them over oh yeah I was going to show you what you do to get the uh, one length of floss off of here so let me go grab a needle really quick so when you need a length of floss to okay, trying to see this without getting my head in front of the camera so you just grab your needle and you grab one strand of floss and just hold on to this and pull like this. Uh, I think I'm in frame. You just pull. And then you straighten that back out again and you have your length of floss. So easy and you're ready to go. I was just going to show you that. Um, what you can do also so you saw me just take this thread off so pretend like I was just stitching with it and I maybe I had some left over so you basically just take that one strand that you were using put it right back into that whoop, right back into the same you know color slot that it belongs in and okay this is challenging because I can't put my head in front of the camera so there. So then you can just leave it there and then you know that when you go to use that next color again you can use up the piece that you, you know, the leftover piece that you had already started and you can just grab it real quick off of there. But it usually just, it, you know, it stays separate from the bundle so you can kind of see that it's there. And also, um, if you, I don't think this chart has any blended colors, I mean it might have a few, but you could actually um, poke another hole here and maybe keep, a, you know, a blend there and you can just like you know, make a note to yourself somehow that that's, you know, put the little symbol for the blended floss. But yeah, you can just keep punching holes in these and just put uh, your extra floss in there as you use it. Okay, that's it for now. That is truly the end of my video. And um, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.